the Deneb's razor-sharp claws tore through another Betazoid villager, ripping him limb from limb as his shrill screams pierced the night, blood spraying the primitive huts. Captain Peter Jenkins gripped his command chair's armrests as the universal distress signal blared across the bridge of the UES Indomitable. The heavy cruiser was 620 light-years from Earth, patrolling the uncharted Kepler-22 system when the desperate plea reached their comms. Jenkins' brow furrowed as he studied the readout. The message repeated every five minutes in an alien tongue, but the fear and desperation needed no translation. Someone on Kepler-22b was in deep shit. Captain, long-range scans show a pre-industrial civilization on the planet, population around 500 million, Lieutenant Chen reported from the ops station. They call themselves Betazoids. Jenkins stroked his salt-and-pepper beard. Interfering with a primitive culture's natural development was strictly forbidden by UESN regulations. But as a veteran of the brutal Centauri War and the Sirius Campaign, Jenkins put little stock in bureaucratic decrees, especially when lives were at stake. Pipe that message into the translator, he ordered, and prep a diplomatic contact team. I want options. The bridge crew sprung into action as Jenkins leaned forward, listening intently as the Indomitable's AI deciphered the alien tongue. Earth attacked our village. The creature has killed over one hundred. We cannot stop it. Our weapons are useless against its hide, the monotone, computerized voice conveyed. We beg for any help before it kills us all. Jenkins slammed a fist on his armrest. He had seen more than his share of carnage, but the anguish in that voice made his blood boil. Regs be damned. He wasn't about to let some alien monster butcher helpless civilians. Jenkins unbuckled from his seat, his eyes burning with resolve. He didn't know what nightmarish beast awaited them on the surface. But he did know this. One way or another, that Deneb's reign of terror ended today. No matter the cost. Jenkins stormed through the Indomitable's gleaming corridors, gathering his away team. He corralled Lieutenant Commander Thompson, Chief Medical Officer Dr. David Chen, and three security officers, Lieutenant Jack Wilson, Ensign Mark Davis, and Ensign Chris Lee. Jenkins barked orders to each, telling them to grab advanced body armor, plasma rifles, and a portable force field generator from the armory. Thompson's eyes locked with Jenkins as they geared up. He said, You sure about this, Cap? Regs say we're not supposed to get involved. Jenkins pulled on his helmet. To hell with the regs. I'm not standing by while innocent people die. As the team assembled in the transporter room, the ship's intercom crackled. Captain, Sensors show a Betazoid hunting party pursuing the Deneb. Twenty natives, primitive weapons only. Spears, bows. But that creature, it's massive. Five meters tall, six thousand kilos, headed right for the village center, Lieutenant Chen reported from the bridge. Beam us down now, right in that thing's path, Jenkins shouted. The transporter chief nodded, hands flying over the controls. The team materialized on the planet's surface in a shimmer of light. They found themselves staring down a nightmare made flesh. The Deneb towered over them, an abomination combining the worst features of a bear and a rhino. Four beady eyes glared from its lumpy head. Six powerful legs rippling with muscle supported its bulk. Jutting from its jaw were a pair of razor-edged tusks, each as long as a man's arm. Those tusks were already splattered with Betazoid blood. Startled by the human's sudden appearance, the Deneb let loose a guttural roar and charged straight at Jenkins. Ensign Davis snapped his plasma rifle up and fired from the hip, striking the creature's shoulder. The Deneb bellowed in agony, the rifle blast burning a dinner plate sized hole in its flesh, but it didn't slow down. The monster ploughed forward, smashing into the glowing blue force field that sprang up from Lieutenant Wilson's generator. The creature and the energy barrier struggled against each other, the field flickering as the generator strained. Then with a pop and a shower of sparks, the generator overloaded and blew out. The explosion flung Wilson back into a tree. His helmeted head struck the trunk with a sickening crack, and he crumpled bonelessly to the ground. Wilson! Dr. Chen screamed. 
he sprinted to the fallen officer's side. Jenkins, Thompson, and Lee opened up on the Deneb, blasting divots in its thick hide. The creature, maddened with rage and pain, thrashed its head back and forth. One tusk caught Ensign Davis in the midsection and punched through his armor like it was tin foil. Davis shrieked as the monster ripped the tusk free in a welter of blood. Davis! Jenkins roared. Grief and fury boiled through his veins as he watched the ensign topple. Shoot the damn thing in the head. Don't stop firing. Jenkins, Thompson, and Lee poured plasma bolts into the Deneb's misshapen skull. The air stank of roasted flesh. Finally, its eyes burst in a spray of fluid, and the creature toppled over backwards, smoke rising from its ruined head. Jenkins stood over Davis's crumpled form, hands balled into fists. This is on me, he thought. I led them here. Jenkins stood over Davis and Wilson's fallen forms, rage and guilt warring in his gut. He had lost people before, but it never got easier. Dr. Chen knelt beside the two security officers, his face grim as he checked their vitals. A rustling from the underbrush snapped Jenkins out of his dark thoughts. He spun, rifle raised as a group of betazoids emerged from the trees. They were tall and muscular, with dark, leathery skin and large, black eyes. They carried primitive weapons, spears, bows, and clubs. The leader of the hunting party, a particularly imposing male, approached Jenkins cautiously. His eyes flicked from the dead Deneb to the human's strange weapons and armor. I am Tikor of the Andari clan, he said, his voice a guttural rumble. Who are you and why have you come to our world? Tikor's eyes widened. You, you understood our language. How? It's called a universal translator. It allows us to communicate with other species. Jenkins gestured to the fallen Deneb. We're sorry for your losses. This never should have happened. Jenkins frowned. If the Zorak had the technology to create something like the Deneb, there was no telling what other horrors they might unleash. He tapped his comm badge. Jenkins to Indomitable. Scan the northern continent for any signs of advanced technology, particularly anything that could be a bioweapons facility. Aye, sir, Lieutenant Chen replied from the bridge. A moment later he spoke again, his voice tight with tension. Captain, we've detected a massive underground structure beneath the Zorak capital city. It's shielded, but the energy readings are off the charts. Jenkins turned to Tikor. It sounds like your enemies are up to something big. We have to stop them before they can create any more monsters like the Deneb. Tikor hefted his spear, his eyes burning with determination. My warriors and I will fight alongside you, Captain. The Zorak must pay for what they have done. Jenkins nodded. Glad to have you with us, Tikor. Indomitable, beam us up. We're going to pay the Zorak a visit. Minutes later... Jenkins, his away team, and a dozen Andari warriors materialized on the Indomitable's bridge. The Betazoids looked around in awe at the sleek, high-tech vessel. Set course for the Zorak capital, Jenkins ordered, and raise shields. If they've got one bioweapon, they might have others. The Indomitable surged forward, its powerful engines propelling it towards the northern continent. As they approached the capital, a klaxon blared from the tactical console. Captain, I'm detecting a massive energy surge from the underground facility, Lieutenant Chen shouted. Something's happening down there. Suddenly the view screen filled with a fleet of ships rising from beneath the Zorak city. There were at least fifty of them, each bristling with advanced weapons and shimmering with energy shielding. Shields up! Red alert! Jenkins bellowed. But it was too late. The Zorak ships opened fire unleashing a storm of plasma bolts that hammered the Indomitable's defences. The bridge shook violently, sparks flying from overloaded consoles. Jenkins gripped the arms of his command chair as the ship shuddered beneath him. This was no longer a rescue mission. It was war. The Indomitable shuddered violently as another barrage of plasma bolts slammed into its shields. Sparks erupted from overloaded consoles, filling the bridge with acrid smoke. Shields down to twenty percent, Lieutenant Chen shouted over the din of battle. We can't take much more of this. Jenkins gritted his teeth, his eyes locked on the viewscreen. 
The Zorak fleet swarmed around the Indomitable like a pack of hungry wolves, their sleek ships darting in and out of range as they unleashed volley after volley of plasma fire. Evasive pattern Delta V, Jenkins barked, and target their lead ship with the particle beam cannons. The Indomitable lurched to port, narrowly avoiding a salvo of plasma torpedoes. Its own cannons flared to life, spitting beams of incandescent energy at the Zorak flagship. The particle beam sliced through the enemy ship's shields and carved deep gashes into its hull. Secondary explosions rippled across its surface as the Indomitable's weapons found their mark. But even as the flagship crumbled under the onslaught, two more Zorak cruisers swept in to take its place. Their plasma cannons flashed, bathing the Indomitable's shields in a hellish green glow. Captain, we're being hailed by UESN Command, Lieutenant Wilson reported from the comm station. On screen, Jenkins snapped. The view screen flickered, replacing the chaos of the battle with the grim visage of Admiral Nora Sato. Captain Jenkins, reinforcements are en route to your location, she said, her voice tight with tension. But they won't arrive for another six hours. You have to hold out until then. Jenkins shook his head. With all due respect, Admiral, we don't have six hours. The Zorak outnumber and outgun us. We need to take out their weapons at the source. He tapped a command into his console, bringing up a schematic of the Zorak capital city. A pulsing red dot marked the location of the underground facility. If we can get a strike team into that complex and disable their weapons systems, we might stand a chance, Jenkins said. Admiral Sato frowned. You're talking about a suicide mission, Captain. The Zorak defenses will tear your team apart before you even reach the facility. Not if we beam directly into the heart of the complex, Jenkins countered. The Indomitable's transporters can punch through their shields. Sato hesitated, then nodded grimly. Do what you have to do, Captain, but make it quick. We can't afford to lose you or the Indomitable. Jenkins turned to his crew. Thompson, Chen, Wilson, you're with me. Tikor, gather your best warriors. We're going in. Minutes later, Jenkins and his strike team materialized in a cavernous chamber deep beneath the Zorak capital. The air was thick with the stench of chemicals and decay. Row upon row of glass tanks lined the walls, each one containing a deneb in various stages of development. Some were little more than embryos, floating in viscous green fluid. Others were fully grown, their monstrous forms straining against their transparent prisons. By the gods, Tikor whispered, his eyes wide with horror. What is this place? Sir, so by your weapons lab. Dr. Chen said, scanning the nearest tank with his tricorder. The Zorak have been mass-producing these creatures. Suddenly a plasma bolt sizzled past Jenkins' ear, missing him by inches. He spun, rifle raised, to see a squad of Zorak soldiers charging towards them, their exoskeletal armor glinting in the dim light. Take cover, Jenkins shouted, diving behind a control panel as more plasma bolts filled the air. The strike team scattered, taking up defensive positions among the tanks and equipment. Lieutenant Wilson took a bolt to the chest and crumpled, his armor smoking. Two Andari warriors fell beside him, their lifeless eyes staring at the ceiling. Jenkins popped up from behind the control panel and squeezed off a burst of plasma fire, dropping a Zorak soldier. Beside him, Thompson and Chen laid down a withering barrage of cover fire, forcing the remaining Zorak to retreat behind a row of tanks. We have to keep moving, Jenkins said, ejecting a spent power cell from his rifle. The control room should be just ahead. The team pushed forward, leapfrogging from cover to cover as they traded fire with the Zorak. The air grew hotter and thicker with each step, the stench of death and chemicals overwhelming. Finally, they reached a massive blast door, sealed with a glowing force field. Jenkins placed a breaching charge and stood back, rifle at the ready. The charge detonated with a thunderous boom, ripping the door from its hinges. The team stormed into the control room, weapons blazing, and found themselves face to face with Zorak Zor himself. The Zorak leader stood at the center of a holographic display, his gaunt frame draped in flowing robes. A dozen elite guards flanked him, their plasma rifles trained on the strike team. 
Welcome, Captain Jenkins, Zorak Zor said, his voice dripping with malice. I've been expecting you. Jenkins stepped forward, his rifle never wavering from Zorak Zor's head. It's over, Zorak Zor. Surrender now and I might let you live. The Zorak leader threw back his head and laughed, a sound like shattering glass. Shall I fool, he hissed. The Deneb was merely the beginning, a test of my creation's capabilities. With the bioweapons I have developed here, I will not only crush the Andari, but conquer the entire galaxy. His long spindly fingers danced across a control panel. A deep rumbling boom echoed through the facility. I have activated this complex's self-destruct sequence, Zorak Zor said, baring his fangs in a vicious grin. In minutes, this place and everything in it will be nothing but ash and dust, including you and your pitiful ship. Jenkins and his team leapt into action, plasma rifles blazing as they engaged Zorak Zor's elite guard in a vicious close-quarters battle. The control room erupted into a storm of energy bolts and flying shrapnel as the two sides traded fire. Jenkins ducked behind a sparking console, popping up to snap off a burst that dropped a Zorak guard. Beside him, Thompson's fingers flew over a terminal, desperately trying to hack the facility's computer and abort the self-destruct. Tikor and his Andari warriors fought like demons, their spears and plasma rifles felling Zorak after Zorak. But the enemy kept coming, heedless of their losses. Captain, Thompson shouted over the din, I'm in self-destruct aborted. But Zorak Zor had used the chaos to make his escape. Jenkins caught a glimpse of the Zorak leader, fleeing through a hidden door at the back of the control room. He's getting away, Jenkins snarled. Thompson, stay here and set the charges. We'll handle Zorak Zor. Jenkins, Chen, and the Andari sprinted after the fleeing Zorak, navigating a maze of corridors. They emerged into a hangar bay just in time to see Zorak Zor's shuttle blast off through a rapidly closing launch aperture. Indomitable, track that shuttle! Jenkins barked into his comm. Outside, the muffled boom of explosions echoed through the complex as Thompson's charges detonated. The team raced back through the crumbling facility, dodging falling debris and gouts of flame. But as they neared the surface, a group of hulking figures emerged from the smoke. Zorak super soldiers, their bodies grotesquely muscled, their faces contorted with rage. They fell upon the team with inhuman ferocity. Jenkins and the others fought back with everything they had, but the super-soldiers shrugged off plasma bolts like raindrops. One of them backhanded Dr. Chen across the room. He slammed into a wall and crumpled to the floor, blood pooling beneath him. Chen! Jenkins cried, blasting the Zorak with a sustained burst to the face. The alien's head disintegrated, but two more pushed forward to take its place. Tikor and his warriors leapt to Chen's defense stabbing and bludgeoning the super-soldiers, buying Jenkins and Thompson precious seconds. Jenkins heaved Chen over his shoulder as Thompson laid down covering fire. They sprinted for the exit, the facility collapsing around them. Bursting from the entrance, they beamed back to the Indomitable as the underground complex vanished in a massive fireball that consumed the Zorak fleet. On the bridge, Jenkins eased Chen onto a stretcher, shouting for a medic. He whirled to face the view screen. Tracking it now, sir, Lieutenant Davis reported. It's heading for a remote system, coordinates 227 by 89 by 42. Suddenly the screen flickered. Zorak Zor's face appeared, twisted into a mask of hatred. Flee while you can, Captain, the Zorak leader hissed. But you're already too late. My agents are in place throughout your precious Federation. At my word, they will reduce your worlds to ashes. Jenkins' eyes narrowed. What agents? Sleeper cells, seeded on a hundred of your worlds, genetically modified with Zorak DNA to pass as human. They have infiltrated your governments, your military, your corporations, and now they answer to me. Here are my demands. Surrender yourself and your ship. Turn the Andari over to me. If you do not comply, my agents will unleash a wave of terror unlike anything you have ever seen, your cities will burn, your leaders will die, and it will all be on your head. The screen went dark. Jenkins slammed a fist on his console, 
his face a mask of determination. Not a chance in hell, he growled. Helm, lay in a pursuit course. I want that shuttle found, and get me UESN command. If Zorak Zor wants a fight, then by God we'll give him one. The Indomitable leapt to warp, racing after Zorak Zor's shuttle into the unknown. The battle had been won. Jenkins' fingers flew over the comms panel, his face a mask of concentration, as he patched through to UESN command. The Indomitable shuddered around him, the deck plates vibrating with the strain of the pursuit. Admiral Sato, Jenkins said as the Admiral's face resolved on the viewscreen, we have a situation. Zorak Zor has activated Zorak sleeper agents throughout UESN space. They're poised to strike at any moment. Sato's eyes widened. Acknowledged, Captain. I'm issuing the order now. All UESN forces are to initiate Manhunt Protocol Alpha-1. We'll flush out those Zorak bastards before they can do any damage. Jenkins nodded grimly. We're in pursuit of Zorak Zor now. He's headed for the Cygnus X-1 system. Request immediate reinforcements. Understood. I'm diverting the Fifth Fleet to your location. They'll be there in... The transmission cut to static as a massive explosion rocked the Indomitable. Alarms blared and sparks burst from overloaded consoles. Report, Jenkins barked. Multiple Zorak dreadnoughts decloaking off the port bow, Lieutenant Davis shouted. They've got us surrounded. The viewscreen flashed to life, filled with the leering visage of a Zorak commander. Surrender, Captain Jenkins, the alien sneered. You are outmatched and outgunned. Jenkins' jaw clenched. The Zorak was right. The indomitable, formidable as she was, couldn't hope to take on an entire fleet of dreadnoughts. Davis, what's our status? Jenkins asked, not taking his eyes off the Zorak commander. Jenkins closed his eyes for a moment, the weight of the decision heavy on his shoulders. Then he straightened, his resolve hardening. Initiate evacuation procedures, he ordered. All hands abandon ship, I repeat, all hands abandon ship. The bridge crew hesitated, glancing at each other uncertainly. That's an order, Jenkins snapped. Get to the escape pods now. As his crew scrambled to obey, Jenkins turned to Thompson and Chen. You two with me, we're going to buy them some time. The trio raced through the ship's corridors, the deck heaving beneath their feet, as the Zorak dreadnoughts pounded the Indomitable's failing shields. They reached the auxiliary control room, a cramped space filled with backup systems and emergency overrides. Jenkins slid into the weapons station, his hands flying over the controls. I'm diverting all remaining power to the forward plasma cannons, he said. Thompson, see if you can get me a targeting solution on those dreadnoughts. Chen, monitor the evacuation. Make sure everyone gets off the ship. Thompson and Chen nodded, their faces grim as they bent to their tasks. Outside escape pods streaked away from the Indomitable, fleeing the doomed ship like rats from a sinking vessel. Targeting solution acquired, Thompson reported. But sir, at this range, with our weapons in this state... I know, Jenkins said, uh, but we have to try, on my mark and at fire. The Indomitable's forward cannons blazed to life, spitting streams of superheated plasma at the nearest Zorak dreadnought. The enemy ship's shields flared, absorbing the blasts, but Jenkins kept firing, pouring every ounce of energy into the attack. Their shields are weakening, Thompson crowed. And then, with a blinding flash, the dreadnought's shields collapsed. The Indomitable's next salvo tore into its hull, ripping through deck after deck. Secondary explosions blossomed along its length as its reactor went critical. The Dreadnought vanished in a massive fireball that consumed two of its fellows. Debris peppered the Indomitable's hull, sending shudders through the dying ship. Jenkins hesitated, his hand hovering over the firing controls. Every instinct screamed at him to keep fighting to go down with his ship, but he had a crew to protect, a mission to complete. They sprinted through the ship, the deck bucking and heaving beneath them. Bulkheads groaned, ready to collapse. Smoke choked the corridors. They reached the escape pod bay, just as a massive explosion tore through the ship. The deck tilted crazily, throwing them off their feet. 
Jenkins hauled himself into the nearest pod, Thompson and Chen piling in behind him. Punch it, Jenkins shouted. Chen hit the launch controls, and the pod blasted free of the indomitable, milliseconds before the cruiser's reactor core breached. A searing white light filled the pod's viewports as a massive shockwave slammed into them, sending them tumbling end over end. Jenkins clung to his restraints, watching in horrified awe as the Indomitable, his home for the past three years, vanished in a blinding explosion that obliterated most of the remaining Zorak fleet. The shockwave dissipated, leaving only drifting wreckage and the distant twinkle of stars. Jenkins slumped back in his seat, exhaustion and grief etched into every line of his face. But there was no time to mourn. No sooner had the pod's spinning stabilized than a tractor beam lanced out from the largest piece of debris, a twisted hunk of metal that had once been a Zorak dreadnought. The beam seized the pod, reeling it in like a fish on a line. Jenkins and the others could only watch helplessly as they were drawn into the dreadnought's hangar bay. The pod settled to the deck with a clang. The hatch hissed open and a dozen Zorak soldiers swarmed in their plasma rifles leveled at Jenkins and his crew. "'Out!' one of them snarled, gestured with his rifle. "'Zorak Zor wishes to speak with you.' Jenkins, Thompson, and Chen were roughly hauled from the pod, their hands bound behind their backs. They were marched through the dreadnought's dimly lit corridors, past scores of Zorak soldiers who leered and jeered at the captives. They entered a large chamber, a makeshift throne room dominated by a massive chair crafted from the twisted metal of destroyed ships, and upon that throne sat Zorak Zor himself, his eyes glinting with malice. Captain Jenkins, the Zorak leader purred, how good of you to join us. Jenkins said nothing, meeting Zorak Zor's gaze with a defiant glare. Though you have caused me a great deal of trouble, Captain, Zorak Zor continued, but it ends now. You will give me the location of the Andari homeworld and the access codes to your precious UESN defensive grid. Refuse and, well. Jenkins' mind raced. He couldn't betray the Andari or the UESN, but he couldn't let his crew die either. He needed time, a distraction, anything. The floor shuddered beneath their feet. Distant explosions echoed through the ship. Zorak Zor frowned, glancing at a nearby console. Sir! a Zorak soldier shouted, bursting into the room. UESN ships have dropped out of warp. They're attacking. Jenkins felt a surge of hope. Admiral Sato had come through. The cavalry had arrived. He caught Thompson's eye, saw the same realization there. Thompson nodded slightly, tensing. Chen did the same. Zorak Zor whirled on them, his face twisted with rage. What have you done? he snarled. Now, Jenkins yelled, he, Thompson, and Chen moved as one, years of training and combat experience guiding their actions. They slammed into their guards, knocking them off balance. Jenkins headbutted the nearest Zorak, feeling the satisfying crunch of breaking bone. Thompson kicked the legs out from under another, snatching up his fallen rifle. Chen, his hands still bound, rammed his shoulder into a third Zorak, sending him sprawling. Plasma bolts filled the air as Jenkins and his crew fought desperately, using every dirty trick they knew. Zorak Zor roared in fury, drawing a wicked-looking blade from his belt and lunging at Jenkins. The battle was joined, a whirlwind of fists and feet, plasma fire and flashing knives. The UESN had arrived, but Jenkins and his team were on their own, fighting for their lives against a ruthless enemy who would show no mercy. They could only hope they could hold out long enough for rescue to arrive. In the UESN High Command Situation Room, a flashing red alert cut through the tense chatter of officers and analysts. Admiral Nora Sato leaned over the central hollow table as a distress signal blared through the speakers. Tikor's voice, strained and desperate, filled the room. This is Tikor of the Andari. We are under attack. Zorak sleeper agents have infiltrated our defenses and launched a surprise assault on our homeworld. They wield advanced weapons, some of UESN design, Bioengineered horrors stalk our streets. Our forces are outmatched. We need immediate assistance or we face extinction. Sato slammed her fist on the table. Damn it. 
deploy the rapid response fleet to the Andari system, and get me the Relentless. The UES Relentless pride of the UESN fleet hung in space above Earth like a great silver sword. On its bridge, Admiral Sarah Thompson stood tall, her eyes fixed on the viewscreen. Admiral Thompson, Sato's image said, the Andari homeworld is under siege by Zorak forces. You are to take the Relentless and all available ships to assist, engage the enemy, and protect our allies at all costs. Thompson nodded, steel in her eyes. Understood, Admiral, we won't let them down. She turned to her crew. Set course for the Andari system, maximum warp, battle stations. The Relentless and its battle group, a dozen heavy cruisers and twice as many frigates, leapt to warp. They dropped out of warp into a scene of chaos. Dozens of Zorak warships swarmed around the Andari homeworld, pummeling its cities from orbit. Fighters danced between the capital ships, bright flashes marking destroyed craft on both sides. The Relentless surged forward, its mighty plasma cannons and railguns spitting death at the Zorak fleet. The human ships, though outnumbered, fought with precision and tenacity. The Relentless itself was a force of nature, its advanced shields shrugging off enemy fire as its weapons pounded Zorak ships into scrap. In the Andari capital, UESN marines beamed down into the thick of battle. They joined forces with Andari warriors, together pushing back against the Zorak invaders. Plasma fire and the roars of twisted Zorak bioweapons filled the streets. Sergeant Olivia Martinez ducked as a plasma bolt sizzled over her head. She popped up from behind a shattered wall and drilled a burst of railgun slugs into a charging Zorak super-soldier. The monster stumbled, its exoskeleton cracked, but kept coming. Lob me a plasma nade, Martinez shouted. Corporal Shu tossed her the glowing blue orb. Martinez primed it and hurled it at the super-soldier's feet. The explosion ripped the creature apart in a welter of shrapnel and gore. We need to push to the central plaza, Martinez said, consulting her tack map. The Andari leadership is holed up there. Thompson gripped the arms of her command chair. Concentrate fire on their flagship. We need to take out their command and control. As the fleet pounded the massive Zorak dreadnought, Thompson's comms officer turned to her eyes wide. Admiral Priority Message from UESN Intelligence. They've located Captain Jenkins and his team. They're being held on a secret Zorak base on the system's fourth moon. Thompson's heart raced, her brother was alive. But for how long? A man's face filled the viewscreen, chiseled and cold, his eyes hidden behind gleaming black implants. Oh, you have a mission for me, Admiral? His voice was a rasping whisper. Captain Jenkins and his people are being held on a Zorak moon base. I need you to infiltrate the facility and extract them. Zero nodded. Consider it done. As the transmission ended, Thompson turned back to the battle raging outside the viewports. Hold on, little brother, she thought. Help is on the way. Agent Zero and his Black Ops team moved like shadows through the halls of the Zorak moon base. Their matte black stealth armor blended with the darkness, rendering them all but invisible. They ghosted past patrols of heavily armed Zorak guards, their footsteps silent on the metal deck plates. Zero consulted his wrist-mounted scanner, the prisoners are being held in the central detention block, he whispered over the team's encrypted comms, two levels down. They descended deeper into the base, bypassing security checkpoints with hacked access codes and careful timing. As they neared the detention block, a Zorak guard emerged from a side passage. Zero moved without hesitation, his monomolecular blade slicing the alien's throat before it could make a sound. They reached the detention block a circular room lined with glowing force field cells. Zero spotted Jenkins and his team, bruised and bloody, but alive. Captain Jenkins, Zero said, deactivating the force field with a few taps on the control panel. Admiral Thompson sends her regards. Jenkins stumbled out of the cell, Thompson and Chen close behind. Damn good to see you, Zero. I thought we were done for. Zero tossed them a bag containing captured Zorak plasma rifles and armor, we're not out of the woods yet. We still need to steal a shuttle and get off this rock. Alarms began to blare, a strident klaxon that echoed through the base. 
Looks like they've discovered our handiwork, Zero said, checking the charge on his rifle. Let's move. They raced through the base, plasma bolts filling the air as they engaged Zorak security forces. Jenkins and his team fought with the desperate strength of men who had looked death in the face and spat in its eye. They reached the shuttle bay, a cavernous space filled with sleek Zorak craft. Zero hacked the door controls while the others laid down covering fire, plasma rifles flaring. Go, Zero shouted as the doors slid open. They sprinted for the nearest shuttle, Jenkins and Zero laying down a blistering barrage of suppressive fire. They piled into the craft, Chen taking the pilot's seat, his fingers dancing over the unfamiliar controls. The shuttle lifted off, plasma bolts pinging off its shields. It shot out of the hangar and into space, engines flaring. As they cleared the moon's gravity well, a new ship dropped out of warp, a great silver sword bristling with guns. The Relentless had arrived. On the bridge of the Relentless, Admiral Thompson allowed herself a small smile as the stolen Zorak shuttle glided into the hangar bay. Her brother was safe. But the battle was far from over. The Zorak fleet, though battered, still posed a dire threat to the Andari and to the UESN forces fighting to protect them. Hail Zorak Zor's flagship, Thompson ordered, steel in her voice. It's time to end this. With a flash of light, Jenkins and his team materialized on the transporter pad of the UES Relentless. Admiral Thompson rushed forward, embracing her brother tightly. Mike, thank God you're all right, she said, her voice thick with emotion. Jenkins returned the hug, then stepped back, his face grim. We're not out of the woods yet, Sarah. Zorak Zor is still out there. We know, Admiral Thompson said. Our intel suggests he's fled to the Zorak Citadel, a heavily fortified space station deep in Zorak territory. Agent Zero stepped forward, his black implants glinting in the light. The station is protected by a powerful force field and a fleet of their most advanced warships. A frontal assault would be suicide. Jenkins nodded, his mind racing. Then we don't attack head-on, we infiltrate the station and take Zorak Zor down from the inside. He turned to his team. Thompson Zero, you're with me. We'll head to the command center and confront Zorak Zor directly. Chen, you and the others will sabotage the power core and disable the force field. Once it's down, the Relentless can attack. The team nodded, their faces set with determination. An hour later, the stolen Zorak shuttle glided through the Citadel's defenses, its stolen IFF codes masking its true identity. Jenkins, Thompson, and Zero, clad in Zorak armor, emerged from the craft, weapons at the ready. They moved through the station's dimly lit corridors, dispatching Zorak patrols with ruthless efficiency. Plasma bolts sizzled through the air, the smell of ozone mixing with the coppery tang of blood. They reached the command center, a cavernous room dominated by a massive holographic display of the surrounding space. Zorak Zor stood at its center, flanked by a dozen elite guards. Ah, oh, Captain Jenkins, he sneered. I knew you would come. You're nothing if not predictable. Jenkins raised his rifle. It's over, Zorak Zor. Surrender now and your death will be quick. The Zorak leader laughed, a harsh grating sound. He drew a crackling energy sword from his belt. You'll have to take me, human. He lunged at Jenkins, his blade a blur of motion. Jenkins parried with his rifle, the weapons clashing in a shower of sparks. Thompson and Zero engaged the guards, plasma bolts and energy blades filling the air. Jenkins and Zorak Zor dueled across the command center, their weapons flashing. Jenkins fought with the strength of a man seeking justice, his every blow fueled by the memories of those he had lost. Zorak Zor was a skilled warrior, his movements fluid and precise, but Jenkins matched him strike for strike, their blades locked, faces inches apart. You fight well for a human, Zorak Zor hissed, but you cannot win. I am the future of the galaxy. Not any more, Jenkins growled. With a twist of his wrist, he disarmed Zorak Zor, sending the energy sword skittering across the deck. He slammed the butt of his rifle into the tyrant's face, dropping him to his knees. At that moment, a deep rumble shook the station. 
The holographic display flickered and died as explosions bloomed in the depths of the citadel. Outside, the Relentless and its fleet opened fire, plasma cannons and torpedoes ripping into the citadel's hull. Zorak warships caught off guard, exploded under the onslaught. Copy that, Captain, Admiral Thompson replied over the comms. Proceed to Shuttle Bay 3 for extraction. They raced through the disintegrating station, dodging falling debris and gouts of flame. In the shuttle bay, Chen and the rest of the team waited by the stolen shuttle, weapons ready. But as they neared the craft, a group of Zorak loyalists burst into the bay. Fanatic fury etched on their faces. They opened fire, plasma bolts stitching the deck. Mike, no! Jenkins cried, but Thompson was already charging the Zorak rifle blazing. He fought like a man possessed, dropping Zorak after Zorak, but there were too many. A plasma bolt caught him in the chest, burning through his armor. He fell to his knees, still firing. Go, he screamed. With a roar of engines, the shuttle lifted off, blasting out of the shuttle bay as the Zorak citadel exploded behind them in a massive fireball that consumed the station and the remaining Zorak ships. On the shuttle, Jenkins held the unconscious Zorak Zor, his face a mask of grief and rage. Thompson was gone, sacrificed to end Zorak Zor's reign of terror. But the fight was not over. As long as a single Zorak drew breath, the galaxy would never be safe. Jenkins would make sure of that. The Relentless streaked through warp, the stolen Zorak shuttle secure in its hangar bay. On the bridge, Jenkins slumped in the command chair, his uniform still singed and tattered from the desperate battle on the Citadel. The view screen flickered to life, filled with the stern visage of Admiral Nora Sato. Captain Jenkins, your orders are to proceed immediately to Earth. Zorak Zor is to be placed in maximum security detention to await trial for his crimes. Jenkins nodded wearily. Understood, Admiral. Jenkins out. The journey back to Earth passed in a blur of debriefings and medical exams. Dr. Chen fussed over the team's injuries, his own face still bruised from the Zorak super-soldier's assault. As the Relentless entered Earth's orbit, Jenkins stared out the viewport at the blue-green world below. It should have felt like a homecoming, but the loss of Mike Thompson hung heavy on his heart. The trial of Zorak Zor was a media circus. The Zorak tyrant, bound in a high-tech restraint chair, sneered as the charges were read out. Genocide, crimes against sentience, war crimes. But as the trial progressed, a disturbing pattern emerged. Witness after witness spoke of Zorak fleets receiving clandestine shipments of advanced weapons, of Zorak officials taking mysterious meetings with shadowy figures. And then, a bombshell. A former Zorak intelligence officer granted immunity for his testimony revealed the existence of a secret organization known as the Galactic Consortium. They were the true power behind the Zorak Empire, the witness said, his voice shaking. A cabal of wealthy individuals from a dozen species. They saw the galaxy as their personal chessboard and the Zorak as their pawns. The courtroom erupted in chaos. Jenkins leaned forward in his seat, his mind racing. If the consortium could manipulate the Zorak, how deep did their influence run? In the aftermath of the trial, Jenkins found himself summoned to a secret meeting with Agent Zero and a cadre of UESN intelligence officers. The consortium represents a clear and present danger to galactic stability, Zero said, his black implants glinting in the dim light. We need to take them down, Captain, and we need your help to do it. And so began a shadow war, fought in the grimy alleys and glittering towers of a dozen worlds. Jenkins and his team, working under deep cover, infiltrated the galaxy's criminal underworld. On the neon-soaked streets of Nexus Prime, they posed as black market arms dealers, making contact with consortium-affiliated gangs. In the opulent casinos of Rigel Seven, they mingled with corrupt politicians and corporate moguls, bugging their suites and hacking their encrypted comms. Piece by piece they assembled a damning picture of the consortium's activities, bribery, assassinations, false flag attacks designed to destabilize governments and spark profitable wars. But even as they gathered evidence, the consortium struck back, 
Jenkins narrowly escaped a sniper's bullet on the smog-choked streets of Industria. Dr. Chen spent a harrowing week in the hands of a consortium-backed crime lord before the team could mount a rescue. The final piece of the puzzle fell into place on Zephyr Station, a colossal space habitat that served as a neutral ground for the galaxy's power players. Posing as a corrupt UESN admiral, Jenkins secured an invitation to a clandestine meeting of consortium leaders. Hidden in the station's maintenance ducts, Agent Zero and the rest of the team watched through hijacked security feeds as a dozen figures gathered in an opulent conference room. Species from across the galaxy, united in their greed and hunger for power. And at the head of the table, a face that made Jenkins' blood run cold. Admiral Sarah Thompson. The room erupted into chaos as UESN commandos burst through the doors, plasma rifles blazing. The consortium leaders scattered, some reaching for weapons, others raising their hands in surrender. But Thompson was gone, vanished in the confusion. Jenkins raced through the station's halls, following the trail of his former mentor. He found her in a hangar bay, stepping into a sleek black shuttle. Sarah, he shouted, leveling his rifle. It's over. Thompson paused, turning to face him. Her eyes were cold, empty of remorse. You don't understand, Peter, she said. The consortium is the future. We bring order to the chaos, prosperity to the downtrodden. All we ask is a little cooperation. At the cost of how many lives, Jenkins snarled. How many worlds burned for your prosperity? Her hand moved in a blur. Jenkins dove to the side as a plasma bolt seared past his head. He rolled, brought his rifle up, finger tightening on the trigger. But Thompson was already gone, her shuttle rocketing out of the hangar bay and into the depths of space. Jenkins slumped against a bulkhead, staring at the space where his mentor had been. The consortium was broken, its leaders scattered to the winds. But as long as Admiral Thompson was out there, the fight was far from over. Jenkins' rifle wavered as he stared down the barrel at Admiral Thompson. His mentor, his friend, the woman who had taught him everything he knew about being a UESN officer, now stood before him as a traitor. Sarah, he said, his voice raw with emotion. Why? How could you betray everything we stand for? Thompson's eyes glinted with a fervor Jenkins had never seen before. The UESN is weak, Peter, bogged down by bureaucracy and indecision, the Consortium is the future. We can bring order to the chaos, unite the galaxy under one banner. She took a step forward, her hand outstretched. Join me, Peter. Together we can lead the Consortium, shape the galaxy as we see fit. Jenkins hesitated, his mind racing. Part of him longed for the stability Thompson promised, an end to the endless wars and conflicts that had consumed his life. But he knew in his heart that it was a lie. The consortium's methods were no different than the Zorax, built on oppression and manipulation. They would bring only tyranny, not unity. Thompson saw his hesitation, and her face hardened. In a blur of motion, she drew her sidearm and fired. The plasma bolt caught Jenkins in the chest, burning through his armor like tissue paper. He fell to his knees, his rifle clattering to the floor. All around him, the room erupted into chaos. Thompson's loyal agents surged forward, engaging Jenkins' team in a vicious close-quarters battle. Plasma fire and ricochets filled the air. Through a haze of pain, Jenkins saw Dr. Chen fall, a gaping hole in his chest. Agent Zero fought like a demon, his black implants flashing as he engaged three consortium agents at once, but even he could not withstand the onslaught, and he soon fell, blood pooling beneath him. Jenkins struggled to his feet, his hand pressed to his wound. He staggered forward, his eyes locked on Thompson. She stood at the edge of a high platform, a look of regret on her face. I'm sorry, Peter, she said, but you left me no choice. Jenkins shook his head, blood flecking his lips. There's always a choice, Sarah, and you made the wrong one? He raised his rifle, the barrel wavering. Thompson's eyes widened and she raised her own weapon. But Jenkins was faster. He squeezed the trigger, and a plasma bolt caught Thompson in the chest. She stumbled back, teetering on the edge of the platform. 
For a moment she seemed to hang there, suspended in time. Then she fell, her body tumbling into the darkness below. Jenkins collapsed, his strength spent. Around him the battle wound down as the last of the consortium agents were subdued or killed. In the aftermath, the UESN hailed Jenkins and his team as heroes. They had exposed the consortium, rooted out the corruption at the heart of the galaxy. But as Jenkins lay in the med bay recovering from his wounds, he felt only a hollow sense of victory. Dr. Chen was dead, Agent Zero crippled, and Thompson, the woman he had looked up to, respected, even loved, had betrayed them all. The consortium had been defeated, but at what cost? The galaxy was still a dangerous, uncertain place, full of new threats waiting to emerge from the shadows. As soon as he was able, Jenkins took command of the Relentless. The great ship, a symbol of UESN power and determination, would be his home now, his weapon in the ongoing fight for justice. He stood on the bridge, staring out at the stars streaking past the viewports. Somewhere out there new dangers lurked, new enemies plotted and schemed. The battle for the future of the galaxy had only just begun, and Captain Peter Jenkins would be at the forefront, leading the charge into the unknown. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.